Welcome to our Bible study beside Henson Creek. We've got Henson Creek over there. It's been raining, so it's a little bit fuller and faster. Um, thank you for joining us. Let's uh, sing the song that we're learning this with this set of lessons. Number 218. Break thou the bread of life. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, be on the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord. My spirit pants for thee, O living word. Bless thou the truth revealed this day to me. As thou didst bless the bread by Galilee, then shall all bondage cease. All fetters fall, and I shall find in thee my all in all. Spirit and life are they, words thou dost speak. I hasten to obey, but I am weak. Thou art my only help, Thou art my life. Heeding Thy holy word, I win the strife. Heeding Thy holy word, I win the strife. Right. Let's take some time to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the life that you have given us. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with some time to open your word. We're asking now that you would send the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. If there's anything in our heart, any bitterness or hatred towards someone or any sin that we've been holding on to, we ask that you would give us the ability to let go of it so that there would be nothing at all between us and you or nothing at all between us and our fellow man. That the way could be cleared. That the channel could be opened that you could pour out your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Please, Father, be with us now as, as we study. And we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. All right. Now it's time for our memory verse. Right. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Romans 8.28. Brother Jonah, do you want to try? I can read it. I can't do it right now. Okay. We'll go ahead and read it. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All right. Romans 8.28. Beautiful. Thank you, Brother Jonah. We're on day three, so 
It's okay, we've got more time to work on it. Are you ready? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Okay. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that are to them let me do it again with the first letters and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. All right. So grateful that I can study the Bible with other people and when I make a mistake in memorization they can correct me and keep me on the right track. Alright. I'm so grateful for God's Word. It gives us so much direction. So much encouragement. Okay. We are in the book of Genesis, chapter 46, and verses 1 through 7. Genesis, chapter 46, verses 1 through 7. Genesis 46, 1 through 7. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God the God of thy father, fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again, and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods which they had gotten in the land of Canaan and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters and all his seed brought he with him into Egypt. Okay. Father Jacob with his sons, families, flocks, and herds, and many attendants were soon on their way to Egypt. In their journey they came to Beersheba, where Jacob offered sacrifices and asked God to go with them. When you go on a journey, when you go on a trip, do you ask God to go with you? 
sometimes I forget when I'm going on a journey to ask God to go with me. Let's not forget to ask for God to go with us on our journey. In a night vision, he was assured that God would prosper him in Egypt and would bring his children's children back to the land of Canaan. He would soon see Joseph. How joyful and cheerful this assurance from God must have made Jacob feel. Okay, we have a few review questions. What all did Jacob take with him to Egypt? Uh, he took his children and his children's children and his flocks of animals. Uh, what else? And then they had like servants or well, yeah, they, they had the do the servants and the, the daughters of the of, of the. Yes. Daughters and, and daughters' sons. Yes. Yes. Excellent. And where, as they went on their journey to Egypt, where did they stop along the way? They stopped in Bathsheba. Yes. And, and he, he made a sacrifice. That's right. In a night dream, who spoke to Jacob? God spoke to him and he instructed him to continue on his journey into Egypt because he would be there following him to create a great nation. Mm, yes, right. That's right. And who did God say that Jacob would see? He would see Joseph. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and then he would go down to Egypt and then come where? God promised that Jacob would go down to Egypt and then there was a promise, a further promise. Um, God said, I'll bring you down to Egypt and bring you up again. That was in Genesis 46 and, 46 and verse 4. Good. Good. Bring the up again, right? Yes. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yes. So there was there was two promises here that Jacob would see his son Joseph, and that he would go down to Egypt, and that God would bring him up again. Did this answer to his prayer make Jacob joyful and cheerful? What do you think? I think the fact that he's going to see Joseph made him cheerful. <laughs> Definitely. De assuming. True. The Bible doesn't specifically say it, but we could very safely assume. <laughs> yeah. We could very safely assume that. Okay. Remember, insects are more sensitive to touch than people are. The touch organs are tiny hairs. Any outside pressure moves the hairs, causing a response from the insect. Some hairs are so sensitive that a gentle breeze can move them. Have you ever tried to catch a fly with your hand? Our conscience should be sensitive to the slightest whisper of Jesus, and then Satan will not be able to ensnare us. Is your conscience sensitive today? Or have you resisted the voice of the Holy Spirit for so long that it has become faint? The beautiful thing about walking with Jesus is that the more you walk with Him, 
the more you talk with Him, the more you work with Him, the more you obey the voice of the Holy Spirit through your conscience, the more clear you can hear that voice. But, the solemn truth is that if you resist the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you go on, and you go on, and you go on, and you go on, walking in disobedience to the voice of your Holy Spirit, then the voice of conscience can grow fainter, and fainter, and fainter, and fainter. One of the saddest conversations I ever had with anyone in my life, I talked to a young woman who said that I used to be a Christian, and I used to, my conscience used to be sensitive. I used to feel sorry for my sin. But now I've resisted the voice of the Holy Spirit so long that I don't really feel guilty about doing wrong anymore. And I don't know if my conscience can ever be healed. And I tried to encourage her and tell her that, yes, you can listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You can walk in the path. Walk in the pathway of purity. Walk on the highway of holiness. And as you obey, as you walk, as you work with the Lord, that the voice of conscience will go stronger again. And she said, I don't know if it can. I just don't hear His voice and I don't feel sorry for sin anymore. So if you can hear the voice of your conscience today, don't harden your heart. Don't go on doing what you think feels good. Regardless of what God has told you in His Word. Obey the voice of conscience. Don't go through the pain of knowing that you have disappointed your Creator. Don't go through the pain of knowing that because of your sin, you were not able to speak a kind word to someone who needed it. Don't go through the pain of looking back on years of regret because you disregarded the still, small voice of conscience. Now, while you'll hear His voice, harden not your hearts, the Bible says. This voice of conscience, as you obey it, will keep you from a life of regret. This voice of conscience, if you obey it, will keep you from a wasted life. If you have disobeyed the voice of the Lord and your conscience has become weak and your conscience has become faint, ask God to heal your conscience. And that is a prayer that He will answer. He wants to speak to you through the still, small voice. Through the voice of your conscience. Your conscience says, don't go there. That's a place full of sin and temptation. The voice of your conscience says, don't say that. Don't hurt that person with those angry words. The voice of conscience says, don't take what does not belong to you. The voice of conscience says, respect the marriage vow. Don't get involved with another person's wife or husband. The voice of conscience tells you to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Don't try to work seven days a week and wear yourself out. Listen to the voice of conscience and you will have no regrets. Our conscience should be sensitive to the slightest whisper of Jesus. 
then Satan will not be able to catch us. He will not be able to ensnare us. The Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So you're walking along in the dark. You're happy that you're almost home. The lion does not roar all the time because if he did, he would steer clear. So he stays quietly waiting and you're walking along and as you're walking along, the lion is waiting. The lion is waiting and you are walking and you are walking and the lion is waiting. And then as the lion sees that you are close, he jumps and he grabs you and tries to take your life. If we're listening to the voice of conscience, that voice will tell us, don't go over there. Don't go in that liquor store. Don't put that poison in your body. Satan, the devil, is there to trap you. Stay away. This voice of conscience will tell you where Satan is hiding out. This voice of conscience will tell you what his plans to harm you are. And then when you know where the devil is on your journey, you will be directed in a different path, far away from Satan. Satan will go hungry. He will be disappointed because you will be guided by the voice from heaven. You will be safe. My friends that I have never met or those that know me that are watching, listen to the voice of conscience. You have a heavenly Father who knows where the devil is. You don't know where he is. You don't know where he's hiding. But you have a heavenly Father. He has an eagle eyes view. He is up in heaven and he sees the whole view. We're down in the valley. We're down in the darkness. We don't always know where Satan is lurking, where he is hiding. And so we cannot know because of where we are. We cannot know where he is at all times. But we have a heavenly Father. And yes, he loves you as his, you are his daughter, you are his son. And his heart's desire is that you will be safe and secure. And you are on a journey from the land of darkness to the land of light. And he wants to see you make the journey without getting ripped up. And so he will tell you, he will warn you of where Satan is hiding. So, if you have disregarded the voice of conscience, as Satan has ripped you up and you're full of wounds because he has caught you, you do have a deliverer, a mighty deliverer named Jesus, Yeshua, and he can deliver you out of the lion's mouth. It will take you time to heal of those wounds, but if you are wounded today because of Satan, do not give up hope. Maybe you think that your wounds are incurable. They are. Your wounds are incurable if you stay within the confines of your own plans. If you try to treat your own wounds, you will fail. But if you will go to your Heavenly Father in the name of His Son Jesus, and you will say, Father, I am wounded because of sin. Satan has torn me up and I'm all in pieces. Would you help me? That is a prayer that your Heavenly Father will answer. He has compassion on those who have been ripped up by the devil's teeth and by his claws. He has compassion on you and He will deliver you out of the mouth of the lions and He will heal your wounds. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. 
He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. His understanding is infinite. If you have been wounded and torn up by sin, don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until you go to church. You can come, you can be healed of those wounds right now, today. Come. Come. There is a great deliverer. There is a great healer. And he is there for you. An insect's sense of touch reminds me of the promise God made to Jacob that he would see Joseph again. He would be able to touch him and Joseph's children and his grandchildren. What a happy, cheerful thought. Joseph's brothers were like a band of men whose hearts God had touched. 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 26. As you work together, as a family, or maybe you're a couple and you don't have children, practice saying or reading cheerful Bible texts if one member of the family becomes sad or discouraged. For example, Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, or Matthew 14, 27, John 16, 33, and Acts 23 and 11. So many encouraging promises in the Word of God that will help us to become cheerful. Let's look for insects and use our insect guidebook to identify them. Go on a treasure hunt in your house to find insects. Try catching them with your hands, but be sure that they're harmless first before you catch them with your hands. Notice how sensitive their sense of touch is. Educate the soul to cheerfulness, to thankfulness, and to the expression of gratitude to God for the great love wherewith He has loved us. Christian cheerfulness is the very beauty of holiness. Smile, smile, smile and be cheery. Blessing hearts that are weary. Oh, I forget the, uh, the rest of it. Ah, uh, I can get the book. Smile and be cheery, though others may frown. Smiles drive the shadows away. Blessing some heart by its sorrow cast down. Smile and be cheery today. Smile, smile, smile and be cheery. Blessing hearts that are weary. Angels are guarding you, Jesus is watching you smile. Smile, dearie, smile and be cheery wherever you are, making each shadow place light. 
Glowing and shining like beautiful star And like the sunbeam so bright Smile, smile, smile and be cheery Blessing, hearts that are weary Angels are guarding you, Jesus is watching you Smile, smile dearie Smile and be cheery when others are sad Happiness always in parts Trying your best to make someone else glad Smile out of the joy in your heart Smile, smile, smile and be cheery Blessing, hearts that are weary Angels are guarding you, Jesus is watching you Smile, smile dearie Smile and be cheery for Jesus our King Watching us now from above Honor and glory to Him we may bring For His sweet wonderful love Smile, smile, smile and be cheery Blessing, hearts that are weary Angels are guarding you, Jesus is watching you Smile, smile dearie mm, My mom would sing that one to me And sometimes I thought mm, Don't sing that to me I don't want to smile Mm. But I'm glad she sang it to me. It's an encouraging song. So encouraging. There are discouraging days where we've made mistakes and we're just we're discouraged about what we did do or what we didn't do, what that he sh what we should have done. I'm so grateful that there's grace for our mistakes. There's forgiveness for our sins. There's wisdom from above when we ask for it. There's light in the morning for a new day. There's a new day given with new opportunities. There's the opportunity that through God's grace we can learn from our past mistakes and we can walk on. We can go on in the strength and the wisdom that only Jesus can give us. Alright, we have a poem. It pays. It pays to wear a cheerful face and laugh our troubles down. For all our little trials wait, our laughter or our frown. Beneath the magic of a smile, our doubts will fade away. As melts the frost in early spring beneath the sunny ray. It pays to make a worthy cause by helping it our own, to give the current of our lives a true and noble tone. It pays to comfort heavy hearts oppressed by dull despair and leave in sorrow darkened lives one gleam of brightness there. It pays to give a helping hand to eager earnest youth, to note with all their waywardness, their courage and their truth, to strive with sympathy and love, their confidence to win. It pays to open wide the heart and let the sunshine in. Let's open wide our hearts and let the sunshine of Jesus' presence in. Jesus is our warmth, Yeshua. He is our warmth in the coldness. He is our light in the darkness. He is our strength when we are weak. He is our wisdom in our foolishness where we do not know what to do. Jesus is our shelter in the time of storm. Yeshua is our deliverer when we have been caught in the trap of sin. Jesus is the one who intercedes for us. 
He is the one who represents us in court when we cannot speak for ourselves. Jesus is the one who gives us grace. Yeshua gives us grace and mercy when we deserve only death and punishment. Yeshua is the one who has created the beautiful flower with a beautiful fragrance. And in creating that for you and for me, He says, my son, my daughter, I love you. Here is one of my gifts for you. Jesus, Yeshua, He is the one that we go to when no human would understand. When there's no one in the world that we can talk to about our problems, about our concerns, He is the one with a listening ear who is always available to talk and hear your heart. Yeshua is the great provider when we are lacking when we have a great need, Yeshua is the great provider. Yeshua is our older brother. And most of all, He is our King. He is our coming King. And one day, we will see Him riding on a white horse, coming in the eastern sky with the clouds of heaven, with all the angels with Him. And there will be two groups of people. There'll be a small group that says, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for Him and He will save us and they will look into His face with joy because their sins are forgiven. They have put away sin and there's nothing between them and their Savior. And then, then there will be a much larger group. A group that says, Oh, they will run and they will hide and they will beg the mountains and the rocks to fall on them. And they will say, hide us from the face of Him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. In vain will they try to seek a place to get away. They cannot stand that bright face. Two groups of people, those who are eager, cheerful, expecting, happy, overjoyed to see their Savior, and another group that is running and hiding and trying to find a cave or a rock to hide under. They would rather be crushed by a rock than to look into that face. When the Son of Man comes, when the King of Kings comes, what group? will you be in? Will you be in the larger group or in the smaller group? The choice is yours. Choose to listen to the voice of conscience today. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we could take this time to study. And Father, if there's anything in our hearts or our minds that is displeasing to You, we ask that You would take it out. That in everything, what we think, let the words of our hearts and the meditation, or let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in Your sight, O Lord. Let everything that we think, that we say, that we do, be pleasing in Your sight. Bless those of us that are here, those that are watching later. May we all be led by Your hand. We want to be led out of this land of darkness and into Your land of light. We thank You for doing this and bringing us on this journey. And we ask in the name of Your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen.